just come see me when you need something. Mm -hmm. my, my wife got it. All right, it is five o'clock. I will call the Finance and Personnel Committee to order. We'll begin with the roll. Elder Lefebvre? Here. Elder Decker? Here. Elder Perella? Here. Uh, do we have anybody online? Sorry. Elder Feldy? We have confirmation Elder Feldy is present remotely. Uh, in that case, we have a full committee. Will you all please join me in the pledge? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, barring any objections from committee, we'll jump over item number four for introductions. And seeing none, we will move on to item five, which is approval of the minutes from our June 24th meeting. Do we have any discussion on those minutes? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Takes us to item number six, which is RO number 26 of 2425 pursuant to Sheboygan Municipal Code section 2-912 sub B, which requires the comptroller to file with the Common Council not less than monthly, a list of the claims approved showing the date paid, the name of the claimant, the purpose and the amount, the attached list of paid vouchers for May 2024 is being provided. Good evening. Um, so in front of you is the list of vouchers for May of 2024. First page is always a summary by fund and the following pages are the detail. So um, we'd be looking to file this. Any questions or comments on this item? If not, we would be looking for that motion to file. I make a motion to file. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, the motion passes. Thank you. Takes us to item seven, which is resolution number 36 of 2425, a resolution authorizing the purchase, purchasing agent to issue a purchase order for two pickup trucks and three sport utility vehicles for Shoreline Metro and authorizing the finance director to amend the 2024 budget to support the purchase. Hello. <laughs> uh, do you have any questions on, on what we're asking for here? Basically, it's essentially a replacing our uh, support vehicles. We have two pickup trucks and uh, three uh, staff vehicles. Um, those are purchased uh, back with 2009 ARA funding. Um, and so we're gonna look to use ARPA funds to uh, replace them again here, um, get us up to date on our support vehicles. So I know there was a email solicitation considering um, hybrid models. Um, and just to let you know, we do typically purchase off state contracts uh, for support vehicles and we are planning to do so this time. Uh, the SUV, the Ford Explorer is only available in a hybrid model for the police cruisers, not for civilian uh, vehicles. So if we were to, uh, I guess, go back to the drawing board on getting hybrid models, we would have to do our own procurement and that procurement would uh, have to make sure it abides by such things as Buy America, which I'm not positive uh, how that would how that would go necessarily. But um, typically, the best and most efficient way is to purchase house state contracts whenever possible, and that's what we intend to do uh, with your support. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this one, Elder Perella? Yes. Yeah, so just to to clarify, um, this will be all ARPA fund. Correct. The uh, 204, I mean, the 264 minus the 25,000, it will be all ARPA funds. 
Yeah, the federal portion, there's, there, it's gonna be all ARPA funds, and there's gonna be the proceeds from the sale of the current vehicles that's gonna be applied to it as well. So we can only retain the first 5,000 on the current vehicles because they were purchased with federal dollars, so the proceeds after 5,000 for each will be returned to FTA. So that's why we're gonna get five grand for each vehicle, so that's why uh, bookmark 25,000 in there. The remaining would be all ARPA. And just to um, follow up on that, since I, I do, I, I find myself in complete agreement with the approach of the email you refer, refer to, as I think that as a city we truly uh, have to push as much as possible to, to shift our mentality towards hybrid or electric. And that is something that I would actually propose citywide, even a percentage, um, as a mandatory requirement, but we are not there yet. However, I didn't get completely why we didn't get um, look that direction. We didn't take that route of considering and comparing compar comparable vehicle, electric or hybrid in this case. Can you please explain it to, to me again why we didn't do that in this case? Well, the main reason, again, is working through the city's purchasing uh, department, we went off the state contract because they did offer an SUV support vehicle and the pickup trucks. The pickup trucks, the heavy-duty the heavy duty pickup trucks are not available in e uh, EV or hybrid, mm -hmm. so that would not be an option for us to do. The only option would, would remain is if we would do our own procurement for the SUVs, uh, there might be an opportunity to do a hybrid uh, off our own procurement. But in this case, we just went off the state contract uh, to purchase the vehicles like we've done for other purchases citywide. That's that's the main reason why, why I went there. Uh, the police cruiser, for example, um, over the civilian gas is about 10 grand more per vehicle. So if we were to look at it, we would be looking at an extra 30,000 um, bare minimally at doing a hybrid versus a gas powered. Right, and I know that you know that the, exp the expense up front it may very well be higher. However, then there is um, the calculation that needs to be made as as to you know if that money is actually um, saved later on mm -hmm. in electricity versus or you know a, a hybrid model. I don't know. I'm just I'm not assuming that that's the case, but. As someone who has to decide, I would like to see those numbers and see, okay, so this is what it costs, is available, this is what, is what it costs, and this is what it, because again, there are tough choices that we as a city have to make sooner or later. You know, it, with the bottom line will not be always the only criterion that we want to follow for that, if, you shift, if we shift mentality on this subject. And also the fact that I, I do not know the purpose of these vehicles necessarily, but for example, a, for my uh, very little knowledge of, of one of these trucks, you know, it's, it's a very heavy truck, right? So it's also the, the mileage is very low because it's super heavy. So our options of purchasing something that is lighter, um, still a good fit for the purpose, but, and at least we could get less mileage. So is this some type of evaluation that you have also taken into consideration? You, but generally speaking, right? So for example, I think one of these is a Ford 250, correct? Yes, the, these models, they're, they're, they're plow trucks. They're pickups with plows on them. They're not available on hybrid models. And, and for the purpose with the plow, can be truck, it, can the trucks be lighter, smaller models? No, no the, so, these trucks plow out our transfer station and our parking lots. They they need to be reliable at, at that. So I so mean, we can't plow out our bus station, then we don't we don't have service in the morning. So it is vital that we keep that station. You know, you get heavy snows. You need a you need a truck that can move it. So you have to forgive my ignorance. I'm, I don't have your same knowledge. So I ask questions that may seem silly to you, but I need an explanation on that, right? Yeah. So, and that is one thing I thought of. You know, these are very heavy. So I don't know if there are alternatives there. And, mm -hmm. um, and then one more question, the, the final one, if I can. You, you mentioned the state contract. And so what is the, the 
advantage of going with the state contract is that we have to start over again with, with a new contract if we do purchase um, on our way instead of a state contract, right? Because I want to understand for future, you know, should we go that route? And how much more work is to go that route instead? Well, FTA procurements are a lot more cumbersome than just a traditional city procurement. So any opportunity we have to take advantage of a contract that's already awarded and in accordance with FTA procurements is a is a bonus to us. Procurements, FTA, uh, because of the threshold, the dollar amount, there is a substantial amount of energy and time that goes into a procurement. And that is that takes a lot of time. That would take a lot of Bernie's time as well. Um, to make sure that we do that procurement uh, in accordance with FTA guidelines. So when we order off, a, off another contract, I would say 50 to 75% of the legwork is already done for us. So it makes it very easy in a sense to uh, purchase a vehicle or purchase off a contract that has a vehicle that we are looking for. And that's right. the advantage here. Right. We have uh, Alder Decker buzzed in, and then okay. Alder LaFay. I just have one. Uh, as far as if you, if you went off a contract, it, it would be also add significantly to the cost because don't we get a discount, great, great, a greater discount when we work through the state? Because it's, it's a bulk purchase, basically, when we work with the state. If we go off that off of that contract, it's going to cost us significantly more, probably. Th that would probably be fair to say, because um, the contract, the state procurement, they'll usually put in a, an amount of vehicles that they expect uh, to be purchased through that contract, and then that is the price point at which the winning vendor or provider uh, kind of bids based on. So yeah, if we were to do our own procurement for three vehicles, we probably would be paying more than what we would be off a state contract, because simply stated, the quantity is a lot bigger off that contract. That's fair to say. That's okay. Oh, there's okay. Yes, uh, what would be the estimate uh, lifespan of these new vehicles? Well, to put it mildly, uh, our current are at 12 plus years right now. Um, actually, 15, if one is 15 years old, and I don't believe it has 50,000 miles on it. Okay. So they're very low mileages. They're used basically to support, you know, going from right. our offices to accident scenes, sometimes out of town So travel. in this 12 to 15 years, we, you know, the uh, industry itself is going to have uh, updates and, and modernizations. So Absolutely. Uh, we, could, we could definitely go more eco-friendly vehicles in the future for the next purchase. Absolutely, yeah. There's always opportunities with every purchase. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this one? <coughs> if not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I'll move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Takes us to item number eight, which is direct, a direct referral of RO number 21 of 2425, submitting the 2023 Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report, or CAPER, for the purpose of a presentation and public hearing to be held on June 24th, 2024. Given the date of that and the fact that I think we all remember having that presentation, I believe for the second or third year in a row, I forgot to ask that we file the document after the presentation. Uh, that is correct. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> so I guess with that, we would be looking for a motion to file. I make a motion to file. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no discussion. Uh, Alder Perella. Yes, I just want to offer a reminder that I had asked for the small short presentation that uh, Director McGuinness Casey um, gave us, but I never received, we never received it. I would like to, I don't know if you have access to it, so. I'll make sure you get a copy Thank of it. you. No problem. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this item? No, we already have a motion and a second on the floor, so all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. And like I said, Next year. Um, 
With that, we are on item nine, which is general ordinance number seven of 2425, an ordinance creating section 2-644 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code, establishing compensation for the Board of Review. Good evening. So the uh, ordinance that is before you today um, came from discussions both with City Clerk Meredith De Bruin and Administrator Bradley uh, due to a few things. First off, um, it appears that the compensation portion of the Board of Review ordinance at some point throughout many years of ordinance review and changes, uh, the compensation piece is no longer in our ordinance. So we have been paying the Board of Review a minimum wage per hour. So often they're getting checks for $15 to $30 for a four day, four hour, sorry, three to four hour um, meeting. And so what we're asking um, to make it a little more uh, substantial of a payment for these uh, individuals who are required to have certain uh, qualifications to be on the Board of Review that they're compensated fairly. So what we're asking for today is $100 for uh, up to four hours and $200 up to eight hours per day. Any questions or comments on this one? So how did we come up with that idea? I mean, with that amount? Sure, so I did, we did $25 per hour thinking that these are professionals and even that is a steal for the city, um, but making it a little more of an appealing uh, board to sit on for individuals. And they are all members of the uh, board of review are always paid. I mean, I, I wouldn't know in other municipalities, they are always paid. Typically, yes, I believe they are. Hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? It's just one for me. How often does the Board of Review meet? Sure, so they do meet um, every year regarding um, the revaluation or evaluation process. It depends on how many times based on how many various uh, appeals and things that uh, occur for that. They always have one short meeting early in the year, which has already happened in May. Typically, when they decide to hold the hearings, they hold another brief meeting to schedule, and then they'll hold the hearings this year that they're gonna be October 1, 2, and 3. They'll put them on as few days as possible, though. So most years, it's one day. So typically, you're talking about two short meetings and one day-long meeting. Okay. But it could be more if there are more appeals. Sure. So we're now looking at bi-weekly meetings throughout the year. Thank you. Did you say bi-weekly meeting? I said we're you not, are not looking okay. at Very that good. type of frequency yeah. for this. Thank you. Thank you for Low that. Low frequency, yes. Indeed. And just one more question, please. Uh, how many members? Five. Five. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed, chair votes aye, the ayes have it and the motion passes. Our next regularly scheduled meeting will be on July 22nd and with that we have exhausted our agenda and are looking for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion and a second for adjournment. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Evening. So I didn't get this.